Folks, thanks for coming on with us today. My name's John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next hour or so identifying sales opportunities using Medicare election periods. This is a topic of great interest uh, throughout the year, but particularly now that we have come through the annual election period and we're in the now open enrollment period with other selling opportunities in this space. Today's presentation is being recorded, and it, along with much of the material we'll reference throughout the course of this presentation, will be sent to everyone by email through uh, the process as soon as this recording updates and gives us the opportunity to make certain that you have the detail that we're promising throughout the presentation. If you have questions as the presentation goes along, this is one of our longer presentations, if you would, make certain you enter them in the questions portion of the software that you're using to view the presentation, and we'll make certain that we address as many of those before we go off the air as possible, and make certain that anyone with an individual question receives response as well. So, a little bit of background to start with. Uh, for those of you who aren't as familiar with Premier Marketing, we're a national marketing organization founded in 1968. We're part of the Integrity Marketing Platform and has offices across the country. We act as an insurance wholesaler working with independent insurance agents offering products of need to people in our demographic. And those contracts are available at the highest possible commission levels with recruiting con contracts available to those who qualify. As I mentioned, we were founded in 1968, so that means recently we celebrated a milestone in our history, our 50th anniversary. We feel that's quite an accomplishment for what started as a small family agency in rural Nebraska. We're now one of the largest distributors in the Medicare space and ancillary space uh, in the country. And we do so through a full insurance portfolio that offers a gambit of products to help those that are Medicare beneficiaries including the Medicare Advantage programs, Medicare Supplement plans, and the standalone Part D prescription drug programs. We also offer a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, including final expense life insurance, pre-need programs, and long and short-term care programs, disability income programs, and ancillary products, and include dental, vision, and hearing plans, critical illness and cancer programs, and hospital indemnity programs. What we hope to show today is how we can use these different election periods that give us an opportunity to sell in the Medicare space, allows us also cross-selling opportunities to expand our hold on our book of business, grow that book of business, and become more profitable and even a greater asset to those with whom uh, we offer our services. That Medicare Advantage portfolio includes all the national carriers, including many of the small regional carriers that can make a difference for you in your market. And that same philosophy carries over to the standalone PDP portfolio where those national players are there for you through our organization. That philosophy carries through through Medicare supplement programs where we have a large and in many times an exclusive relationship with carriers out there for you in this space. We also have specific tools made available to you without cost that helps you be very successful in offering these programs to those who it feels is their best option. That ancillary space, it includes the national leaders in each of those categories for you. We will over your webinars on those programs as well and invite you to listen in on those, be it live or be it, as we used to say, on the old TV commercials, Memorex, those recordings on our website and on YouTube. When we look at the Medicare market itself, you don't come on a webinar like this or a presentation like this without hearing baby boomers, 10,000 people a day, one every 11 seconds. But if you look at it based just on age, you're not really getting a true representation of the opportunity that we have. There are many people who reach 65 and choose to continue to work and don't access their Medicare benefits immediately. There's a portion of the folks that are aging in that have other coverages that preclude a need for some of our programs. But then again, we've got about a sixth of the Medicare population that are accessing those benefits that are actually under the age of 65 
you know, are great prospects for us as well. So we need to be aware of the different characteristics of this population and how having a varied portfolio of products with a number of different carriers can be very beneficial, not only to us, but for the folks that we serve because they have challenges with their bodies. Two-thirds of them, as they come on Medicare, have three-plus chronic conditions. And sometimes that impediment to their health has affected their income and savings as well. So having programs that help address the needs they have at reasonable prices can make a huge difference because, hey, look at that, five-plus chronic conditions, 22%. We have a population that needs our help, most certainly. And those monies, well, that median income of 26002 that is a true issue we need to address and make certain that we have programs that can help these people. So, as many of you are aware, and I'm preaching to the, to the choir here in this particular circumstance, when a person comes on to Medicare, particularly those folks that are older, they have a number of different choices before them. The first choice is a quote of a, old, a sales manager I had 30 plus years ago at Prudential. He said, a decision to make a decision is a decision. And that's really true because they don't have to do anything else. They don't even have to pick up their Part B optional coverage. It's wise that they do, unwise that they don't. But some folks will choose just to self-insure and maybe pick up a standalone Part D program to help with their medications. Some may have other coverages, such as veterans' benefits or retirement benefits, but they don't have to do anything else independently. However, the majority of the folks will look at, in many circumstances, two options to help cover those medical expenses. One is purchasing a standardized, modernized Medigap policy, a Medicare supplement program, and layer on that prescription drug coverage through the standalone Part D program, or many others will go into Part C, where they go the private insurance route, having their Medicare benefits delivered through a private insurance company on a Medicare Advantage plan. Many of those programs have the medication coverage integrated into that benefit package, so they feel fairly set in that particular circumstance. And what we're seeing through different pieces of research, this piece from Deft Research tells us that as people age in, the choice is pretty much even. So you see about half of the people that are making a choice, 39%, selecting Medicare Advantage programs, 41%, uh, picking Medicare supplement programs, and then you've got the percentage that are doing nothing, according to this data. They may have other coverages we're unaware of, but there is that portion of people who don't pick up any additional coverage. We need to be very mindful of that. So, looking at just who these folks are, we can see that based on their circumstances, we need to have different programs available to help them be aware of the possibilities for coverage and how they will have an opportunity to select not only between plan types, but also multiple carriers with multiple people reaching out to them. We're all very well aware of the competition that we see in this space. One of the things we have to deal with right off the bat, hey, it's another language in many circumstances. These acronyms that we hear all the time, and we find that as we work in this market much more frequently, that we, we kind of just toss some of these things out like everybody knows what the heck they mean. And if any of you have had any of your family members deal with computers or deal with a different industry that has their own acronyms, you kind of shake your head sometimes and go, what the heck is that? So sometimes kind of translating the terms that are used with these acronyms and making certain that people actually understand what we're talking about through our course of our presentation most surely makes this a much simpler way of communicating with our prospects and clients and that they have the opportunity to actually understand what we're saying. So some of this stuff that you're seeing right now will come to you as part of the follow-up uh, along with the PowerPoint and the recording that we're making today. So as we spend time today, we're going to go into specifics on these election periods. 
And when we identify Medicare selling opportunities, keep in mind that may not be just Medicare health products. It may be ancillary programs. We're not going to go into a huge amount of depth in that. But keep in mind, this is an opportunity that we're looking to use as a piece of conversation with our prospects and clients to make certain that we serve them best and they stay in our book of business for now and into the future. So when we look at Medicare and think back to that slide that we had, we've got the traditional Medicare side with the Part A and B, and then the Medicare Advantage and Prescription Drug Programs with C and D. These different opportunities have different applicable legislation and marketing and conduct oversight. You can do some things with Medicare supplements that you can't with Medicare Advantage and Prescription Drug Programs when it comes to marketing. You have different product options, obviously, and different enrollment periods that are applicable. And then, of course, the licensing and certification is distinct between the two products as well. You don't necessarily have a lot of the annual certification with Medicare supplements. Only one comes to mind. Um, and then, so in many circumstances, the contracting process with Medicare supplements is a little easier or quicker. That depends on some of the carriers. Some of the carriers have an extensive licensing process that can slow us down. Never be afraid of the certification process. We're taking continuing education classes all the time to make certain our licenses are up to snuff. But that annual review or the programs that we offer makes certain that we are conducting ourselves in a proper manner and that we have the education we need to properly discuss all of the choices that our prospects and clients have. So when we look at some of the standardized election periods to start, many people are still catching their breath from the annual election period, which goes from October 15th to December 7th. The so plans can start marketing. We can start marketing on October 1st. And this is the opportunity that many folks take to review their annual package of benefits, be it the programs that require this to be in place for change, or even Medicare supplements, which we can, based on the state you're living in, do it month to month anyway. So it's a period of great change in many circumstances, and for some folks, it's a period of reassurance. They got the plan they like, and they ride that pony. Well, then there's also the different special election periods that come into play, uh, including non-renewable special election period, which is from December 8th through the end of February, where if a plan is non-renewed, they have a special election period to take advantage of that. And then, of course, there is the uh, Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which goes from January 1st through the end of March, which gives a person on an MA plan a chance to switch to a different MA plan or go back to original Medicare and use that set to pick up their drug coverage. Some things we'll go into that in specifics in great detail here in just a moment. One of the things that we see the government really publicizing is the special election period for the five-star programs. And these are the plans available in the Medicare Advantage and Prescription Drug Space that has the highest rating that the government makes available to them. And it gives them an opportunity to change into one of those programs one time throughout the year um, to make certain that they feel comfortable with what may be labeled one of the premier programs in their particular area. We also see different programs that are made available for those that are of limited income and assets in the dual eligible and LIS programs. We'll go through that in specifics in great detail here in just a moment. And then there are a number of other special election periods that give us an opportunity to look at an individual's coverage and should the situation dictate change that coverage for an improvement of their benefit packages. When we look at the Medicare lock-in period, which many people feel we're already in at the 1st of January, because it, OEP is only on the Medicare Advantage space, in a manner of speaking, it gives us an opportunity to look at that huge population of Medicare beneficiaries and realize that a very large percentage of them can change throughout the year. This is a image given to us by United Healthcare, and it helps us realize how these different programs roll into play throughout the calendar year. It helps us set in our mind 
when we can do certain things with what types of coverages and make certain that if we deal with United Healthcare, we use their language um, to make certain that we are processing applications correctly. Another representation of that here. Keep in mind this presentation is coming to you, so we're not going to go into it in great deal to detail um, to belabor the point. When we look at the Medicare Advantage Open Enrollment Period, the OEP, this is a change that came about starting last year. Uh, before that, we had a disenrollment period, an MADP, that is no longer in play. And it is a program that can be used, a, an exception to be used for someone's coverage once a year. Um, the people that are aging into Medicare obviously have all of the other options to enroll in different programs, um, but this is also an opportunity for them to really look at what they may have selected earlier in the year and then in perhaps February and March still take advantage of the change. The Medicare savings accounts and cost plans aren't included in the OEP. Now, there is a substantially lower number of cost plans available throughout the country, but keep in mind, even though the majority of cost plans were sunsetted last year, there are still some available in very limited markets across the country. When a person in an MA plan at the first of the year, what can they do? Well, they can switch MA plans, an MA to MA, from an MA to a PDP, a PDP to, or pardon me, an MA PD to an MA PD, or an MA PD to an MA. Why would somebody do that? Well, maybe they have network concerns with their original choice that have come to light after they made a selection. Or maybe they didn't examine the benefits through the uh, annual notification of benefits that they got in the fall. And then after the first three years, it, ooh, that's a little hickey I better address. It is a situation then that also we have to be very careful about when we're switching from an MAPD plan to an MA plan because if that is on a network-based chassis, they're basically opting out of drug coverage. Maybe appropriate for someone who has retirement coverage or perhaps they want to access only through the VA, but we need to make certain that they're aware of the consequences of their choice in that, in that, in that situation. If we have someone who's looking to leave their MA program, go back to original Medicare, this is an option for them. Um, we need to coordinate their Part D coverage, however, if that was integrated into their choice at the first of the year to make certain that they have that coverage and they're not subject to any penalties. So we're going to add or drop the PD plan, PDP plan when switching these programs. We have to make certain they realize that they have to have an MAPD plan with drug coverage in order for that Part D to be guaranteed. And it's not an opportunity to change just their drug plan. So you can't go from one standalone PDD program to another one. And if you're in original Medicare, it's not an extension of ADP. They can't use this particular enrollment period to join an MA plan from original Medicare if they've already been on it and it's not an initial selection. What we see with the different carriers are different pieces of communication to go out that helps you with the rules that they have in play. And it's one of those things that we have to look at it as an agent as, well, wow, it's their ball. You gotta play the game as they lay it out. Because what the government does is they give carriers guidelines for these different programs, and then the, the carrier's left to interpret some of the fine points of that. So in this particular circumstance, if you contract with Aetna, and they're in a PDP program. They have specific rules that are available for you. And they have some really nice tools that give you an opportunity to see videos about their interpretation, and they have an OEP overview flyer that's going to come to you as part of the follow up today's presentation. You see much of that then translate into their marketing support, and they have those fillable materials that make certain that you stay in compliance as you market throughout this period. Because keep in mind, you have certain restrictions that you'll note in some of the subsequent slides as to how you approach marketing OEP. Uh, Cigna gives us some of that detail quite uh, right in your face, kind of, what we have with their noting that CMS prohibits marketing to current MA and PDP enrollees 
with the key terms to understanding the rule knowingly and unsolicited. So in this particular circumstance, obviously, we're going to continue to market as we normally do throughout the year to that great aging end of the boomer population and that disabled population where MA plans are really a great option in many circumstances, but we can't target the folks that we know may have left us um, or aren't soliciting our advice moving forward. So it gives us then further detail as to what we can do. We need to stay focused on the sales and growth, which we do anyway, um, but we also gives us an opportunity to make certain that this is a time period that allows us to create a greater relationship with providers and, un and other influencers during this time period. So much of the grassroots marketing that we do that we cover in other additional webinars gives us the opportunity at this point in time to help those folks that deliver the care of the packages of benefits that we lay out. It's a great way to deepen that relationship. Now, obviously, it's an opportunity for us to stay in touch with our current clients, and we can do so through some of the programs we're going to reference in just a bit to make certain that they realize that we're here there as a resource for them, uh, as their agent, and that we are looking to make certain that we cover them with not only a general health program, but also plug any other holes that they may have and create additional satisfaction not only with the plan, but with ourselves as well. So we have to make certain, once again, that we follow the rules. United Healthcare Stance, well, they've got some additional details as well that are very helpful for us to use, and they give us some specific guides, much as the other carriers are not referencing. We're not going through every one of these guys. We have done them. Um, but it gives us an opportunity to look at different tools they make available, including this one, which I think is really helpful, which gives us an opportunity to look at not only different election periods, but some of the consequences of those actions where we can see what denial and disenrollment actions come about, some of the sample letters that are sent out, and for those of you who get these every now and then, what the heck did that code mean? Well, you can find it in this, and it also gives you some information about an image. MMP plans, which are uh, something we're going to discuss when we hit the dual SNP area. So it's a program that can be really helpful for you, a tool that can be really helpful for you, but specifically, you have a nice reference guide that you can use with the different codes and time periods and examples. So United is very strong in supporting our reference material and our knowledge as to what we can do and when. And yes, this tool is coming to you as part of the follow-up as well. You will note as you go through and dig through the different programs and the information that is sent to you on a continuous basis that, well, like Humana, Aetna, Cigna, United, many of the big carriers have this all available for you also on an electronic basis and that as you market a particular program to a particular prospect, you're speaking to them in the language of the carrier that you are offering. Uh, United does also have their producer help desk help you verify OP eligibility. Um, many of the carriers now have a telephonic resource that you can use not only to verify this eligibility, but perhaps also identify some of those individuals who have assistance for the extra health program, the low income subsidy, or the um, Medicare savings programs, dual eligibility as well moving forward. So some of this does caution us as to the language that we use, and then of course common sense comes into play as well. 2020 SEP chart. You got a number of different opportunities that are made available to you uh, in many circumstances. Well, we run across some of these much more frequently than we do um, others. When you look at leaving coverage through no fault of your own, this is creditable coverage that a plan may have gone away. You generally have much notification of that ahead of time. There's also some different things that come into play 
when you change employer or union coverage, a loss of group coverage, um, either voluntarily or involuntarily, can be a difference to you. If an individual is institutionalized, uh, we don't normally recommend that people do a lot of marketing to nursing homes or things of that nature, but there are circumstances where that might be a viable way of reaching out to the population. And if they're in a nursing home or institutionalized, it gives us an option to work perhaps even with a person that has power of attorney for the group. So some different things that come into play. You don't see as many people that have been challenged by a loss of a speed pharmaceutical assistance program but be aware of it. And for those folks, number five can be a really big player throughout the year. We noted earlier on a slide the median income at 26.2. Gee, that's pretty close to 150% of federal poverty level. And that's the, the highest income an individual can have to get extra help. And then, of course, a quarterly special election period. We'll deal with that in greater detail along with number six, when a person gains, loses, or changes those statuses as well. There is an opportunity for folks that use the trial set. It's their first run in a Medicare Advantage plan, and in the first year, they can, even after OEP, can go back to original Medicare using that and pick up um, a PDP program and examine some of the choices they have for Medicare supplements. PACE programs, you're dealing with folks that are of a lower income, all, all exclusive care. You don't run across that nearly as much. But then number nine is one that comes into play fairly frequently as well when you move from one service area to another, and that is service area to another. So it's not just changing addresses. You have to move outside of a plan offering space in order to make and take advantage of that. There are folks, too, that perhaps they didn't pick up their Part B when they were first eligible or some other circumstance where they have deferred picking up Part B because they were still working or whatever. These Medicare eligibility issues can give us an opportunity to uh, pick up coverage then. Commonly, a lot of the Part B comes available at the 1st of July, but you can see exceptions to that as well. We're going to spend quite a bit of time on the SNP plans, including the, the different options that are available there. And then number 12 is almost a codicil to the um, 5 and 6. We'll deal with that. Um, you will occasionally run into some of the carriers that have uh, had some enrollment errors. Errors when we think about it, it's a large number of people that are utilizing the decision-making factors all at the same time. Sometimes it's just bound to happen, a small percentage, but it's a big percentage if it's us. And then, of course, there may be misrepresentations and some other things that come into play with contract violations. Um, the plan no longer offering coverage, generally you know about that ahead of time, but once again, we're going back to some people just don't pay attention to it until it bites them a little bit. And then, of course, the OEP that we discussed, the initial Part D program when someone turns 65, how that works. We referenced the five-star MA plan piece. No performing Medicare Advantage or Part D programs. We don't see this as frequently as we have done in the past where if a plan is well performing three years in a row, they may be spanked pretty hard or not made available. In those circumstances, uh, it gives us an opportunity to help upgrade coverage. Sometimes, depending upon where these low pro performing plans are, maybe a circumstance of an area of lesser population. Some other reasons come into play sometimes, but it's an opportunity for us to help these people as well. There is, of course, the number 19, where an MA plan terminates a significant amount of its network providers that give us an opportunity to address that. It usually comes with a great amount of press in a particular market, but you have to take into account what they determine is a significant amount. So the loss of a singular doctor out of a network or a doctor group out of a network, if that Provider network is still robust enough that it can that it can handle those changes. That set may not come into play, even though someone lost their particular doctor. And then, of course, exceptional circumstances. Sometimes that's yes, Mother Nature puts her hand in play, and many of the folks that are affected by 
or who were affected by Hurricane Dorian, they have a special election period that extends through uh, an extended time period after uh, the open enrollment period, the EEP, ended. And one of the things that's going to come as part of a follow-up to today's presentation is a listing of the counties where this comes into play. And I think that'll be very helpful to go through that county by county at this particular point in time. Well, I don't think you'd like me very much to do that because it would take place a great deal of time. So once again, we're referencing back that election period booklet that United makes available, and then we dive into the dual and low-income subsidy set limitations. Keep in mind, last year was the first time that we saw a change in the frequency of the special election period. Um, prior to 2019, the person could change each and every month if they had this particular type of assistance, or so an MSP or an LIS, and they could move month to month. That changed last year where it's been a singular option in each of the first three quarters of the year, with the annual election period being used in the fourth. So a person can only take advantage of this SEP once every three months. And certain individuals who are deemed at risk, there's a different set of rules for them as well. So what we have then are different circumstances that are dictated by the Comprehensive Addiction and Recovery Act, CARA, which certain individuals, based on a greater awareness of uh, opioid challenges, some of the other things that come into play, these folks may be limited to um, that, and that's one of the reasons why we want to access those resources given to us by the different carriers to make certain that, okay, someone's got an MSPIS, let's verify some of the particulars of their assistance and make certain that we're doing things correctly as well. So there are different, this link here is actually uh, a piece that you can use to get greater detail on that if you have questions, but utilizing your carrier resources can be your greatest assistance here because these are different sets. So that dual LIS set has different subsets in it, and we'll see that specifically here and how this changes how we address uh, that population at large. Now, keep in mind, this is a, is a finite percentage of the folks that have that assistance, but we need to be aware of it. And this is one of the things that will sometimes pop up on an agent and say, well, he had LIS and can't use it. Well, there might be a reason, and this might be that reason. So, read your details when it comes into some of the specifics of that. Um, and then keep in mind that this is an area that if we're not deeply involved in the MAPD space, because there are agents that are devotees of the MAPD space, some of those, hey, I'm a med sub agent. I'm going to do that MAPD stuff. Um, many times you do advise, however, on the Part D programs. This gives you an opportunity to make certain that we examine the coverage they have in their drug assistance and that their current prescriptions are best served by a particular program that is available for us. This is something that has come to light in greater detail, greater focus on it, because of some of the challenges that came about with the change on the Medicare plan finder. So we're addressing some of those issues and have tried to do so before the EEP finished, but this is where some of the private tools, such as our Medicare Center program, can be of great value for you in not only examining the choices that they have, but also the ones that are available to you with carriers that you represent and what may well be a better choice for that individual financially based on that analysis. Their current medications, their current dosages, how often they take them. And you'll see, obviously, that formularies do change year over year. Many of us have seen that in our own coverages year over year, and that that value of low-income subsidy is pretty substantial. You make a big difference as well when it comes to protecting a person who perhaps made a choice late with their drug coverages. It helps them with the coverage gap that's supposedly closed, but it still influences what a person pays during that gap. It gives them also an opportunity to waive 
a late enrollment penalty for Part D if they didn't pick it up when they were first eligible, gives them that special election period, and then someone who enters into um, the process to qualify for LIS, it also triggers an additional application for the Medicare Savings Programs. I'm going through those in greater detail in a little bit too, so you can help them maximize the assistance that they have available and for which they may be eligible. Big jump. This is 2018 data. 2019 is not so available at the particular moment, but we'll see that the low income subsidy, when we think about that and we go, wow, that's only going to influence the decay and co payment of coverage in an MAPD plan. Uh uh. Those standalone Part D programs, look at that, 61% of them. You can make a big difference in utilizing that particular program to maximize the value to your prospects and clients, but if someone's got a standalone Part D program, what's that tell us? Well, they probably have no other additional medical coverage. It gives us an opportunity to perhaps sell an APD plan or add a Medicare supplement based on that person's current situation. They're there, lower income. Well, you know where that can lead sometimes too. But it also makes certain that we market completely and we help them maximize the value of the benefits available to them. We spoke of the fact that as a person, if they qualify or apply for LIS, it creates also an enrollment process for an MSP for them. Well, these programs, if you're not aware of them, are assistance programs that help with the Part D premium across the board in all the different categories. And in certain circumstances, cost sharing for the medical services as well. These are for the folks that are at 100% of federal poverty level, up to 135% of poverty level, and are not folks that generally identify themselves as a Medicaid recipient. It gives us an opportunity to look at different levels of assistance here for a qualified Medicare beneficiary. This coverage of QMB, a QMB individual, it pays a Part B A premium, if applicable, we didn't have enough quarters for that to be fully funded, or a Part B premium for so each and every year that takes care of that portion of their budget, and also pays the Part A and B deductibles, co-payments, and other co-insurance. It's different than if you progress up to a, a Slim B, a specified low-income beneficiary, where this assistance only pays the Part B premium as does a QI1 individual, a qualified individual. But if you're looking at the income on a monthly basis of one of these people, even if they're only getting their Part B covered through Slim B or QI, that's a huge difference in their month-to-month -month budget. And these are folks that are generally not accustomed to a whole lot of additional help. So you don't see a lot of bounce with these people from program to program because Generally, to qualify for a dual SNP, uh, most individuals, in order to get full benefit out of those programs, they have to be a QMB or better. So that can make a difference for you, too. It also gives us an opportunity to help with a Part B late enrollment program, uh, the penalties that they have with that, and helps recover those dollars. So even additional penalties are taken care of by the program. and States are not allowed to ask for repayment of costs being covered under the MSP from the estates of deceased MSP recipients. Sometimes if you get into uh, planning for long-term care, you've got a different situation than what we're addressing here. So totally, that's a zebra compared to this horse. And if a person qualifies for an MSP, they automatically get the LIS. So they're deemed eligible. So it not only takes care of that uh, meat premium and from circumstances, the medical expenses, that come as part of that assistance, but it changes with the pay for the drugs as well. What you have here then are different governmental agencies working hand in hand to take care of a vulnerable portion of the Medicare um, beneficiary database, in a manner of speaking. You have CMS and the states working together in order to help fund these programs. Also, you'll see the states may have different eligibility requirements. There are some states that don't have an assets test 
where the majority of the, uh, the country does. And they are the folks that pay that Part B premium and Medicare co-payments, co-insurance and deductibles to health care providers for folks that have QMB, okay, that Part A, for those who are on behalf of the QMB, folks at 100% of federal poverty level, and the working disabled as well. So in order for a person to be eligible for these assistance programs and have an opportunity for us to really influence their day-to-day -day life, there are certain eligibility requirements they have to meet. you got to have Medicare Part A. They've got to meet the income and resource eligibility test. And these are financial guidelines that are set by law that states can raise or eliminate certain tests. So as I mentioned before, eight states do not have the resource test. And so if you run across an individual who is moving from one of these states to a state that you live in and market in or market in or both, it may affect their eligibility on the new state. And it happens more than you might think. And these are applications for this assistance are generally submitted to the local Medicaid agency. They can do uh, an application process for MSP by completing the LIS. This gives us an opportunity to kind of stair-step them into assistance because LIS is an approval or denial. It's much more timely than an MSP determination and that this does change year to year. These financial resources, you'll notice as we go through the presentation, we're still using 2019 numbers. The 2020 determination for these programs is not yet available. In the past, we've seen this occur even into April, but we've been seeing it earlier over the last few years. These are the numbers that come into play. So this is a nice chart to have as part of your presentation reference material because it tells us what a person can earn up to and what they can have in uh, disposable resources in a household in order to qualify for this assistance. So it's, it's a big thing, and there are some circumstances where they'll even go back and help um, recover past money they've spent in the past when it comes to their Part B premium. So keep in mind there are certain exceptions to these amounts. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii, if you market in those areas, uh, they have a higher income requirement that is available to them. and um, once again, those different assets tests in those states that we mentioned a bit earlier. This is a program or a series of programs that had come about at different times through different pieces of legislation. And even though they may have been in place for a number of years, you're going to run across folks that are eligible for these assistance programs that don't have it. And a little bit of time, a little bit of study can make a difference not only in how effectively you market but also what kind of relationship you create with your new client and how they are going to be sticky. Your persistency is much higher when you take that extra step and help these individuals with this additional assistance. So, I mean, the qualified Medicare beneficiaries, these are folks at 100% of federal poverty level or below. Look at that. Over 60% of them, they're not enrolled in the program even though they qualify. This can make a huge difference in their life. Which part me, the uh, additional programs that come into play afterwards by different pieces of legislation, these two pieces, once again, they cover that Part B premium, but if you look at that as a percentage of their monthly income, it's a big difference in their life. Here's a nice slide that gives you that detail on the 2019 numbers. As soon as these update available for us, um, obviously we'll kick them out to everybody and make it. Uh, additional information available to everyone who works in this space. When you deal with Medigap policies with Medicare supplement programs and you run across the Medicaid individuals, obviously if you're working with an individual that's a QMD recipient, you don't sell these folks a Medigap policy. You might consider them for a dual special needs program. And that may be of great assistance to them, but it's not a med sub prospect. With Slumbies and QI1s, you can look at this and evaluate if that is a strong choice for them. 
this is a category that you'll see some of those 20% that didn't make a choice. This is where they are. And part of the prohibition of the choice in their mind was, well, I can't afford it. Looking at this it may make a difference to them as to what choice they have for additional coverage at their preference. So we have also some challenges that we have when we deal with long-term care Medicaid and the coverages those folks have in those facilities. If a person had the foresight to address their long-term care need through a different policy, you're talking a different animal, and it gives us different possibilities to market people in those circumstances. So there's also the challenge that came out with the ACA legislation from a few years ago and people being confused as to, well, if I'm in the marketplace, and I'm coming on Medicare, what do I do? Well, they're confused about that, they're even further confused by the fact that the Medicare open enrollment, and they changed the nomenclature on this periodically, they don't realize that um, they're in one or the other. People with Medicare are covered, and they don't have anything to do with the marketplace. It's a different animal. They may have Part A and continue to work, and that these different things will come into play, but we've got a different presentation on how to uh, get detail on that, and it's on our YouTube and on our website channel as well. So keep in mind, this link, along with the presentation, is being sent to everyone who expressed interest in the webinar. So kind of key messages in that space, Medicare is not part of the marketplace. You have opportunities to view what you need to do when you run across people like this and how you deal with some of that overlap. Both of those open enrollment periods are gone now, we're past them, but it also gives us an opportunity to make certain that we address those people that may be part of what we refer to as the working age. People that continue to work and have coverage outside of it. So one of the things we run across with greater frequency uh, now and what we've seen in the offerings of the different Medicare Advantage carriers is a greater proliferation of the offering of different special needs programs. These are programs that were created by legislation put back in 2003, the Medicare Modernization Act, that were to focus on certain vulnerable groups of Medicare beneficiaries. It's been re-upped through a number of different pieces of legislation um, throughout the course of the time period from then to now, and including the macro legislation that affects some of the choices for folks with med stops. But these are specific subsets of Medicare Advantage programs that are designed and tailored to folks with certain diseases or characteristics. They tailor the benefits. Uh, they have specific provider choices that may vary from plan to plan. Uh, the drug formularies have certain uh, requirements as a SNP program. And one of the things that you see with a special needs program is they always have the integrated drug coverage in the base program. Keep in mind some of the other MA programs where there may be MA only opportunities, a SNP plan, a special needs plan, I racked my own admonition of being an acronym, what it mean? These folks have drug coverage as part of that program in every special needs plan. You have different categories where these individuals qualify for a special needs plan. They got to have the A and D. They got to live in the plan service area, meet the other eligibility requirements as such based on the type of special needs plan that comes into play. You have a chronic special needs plan, a CSNP, where based on certain health circumstances, if that can be verified by their physician, they may qualify for one of these programs. Now, keep in mind, just because we've got all these different programs listed, it doesn't mean a CSNP with that health circumstance is available in your market. You don't have to offer them all. What we see most commonly are cardiovascular programs with CHF. Um, you also will see diabetes programs with great frequency. You do occasionally will see different cardio or pulmonary programs as well. Stroke in many cases falls in that cardiovascular challenges. But generally there are 
programs made available and not necessarily all in our market. And there may also be a CSNAP available that addresses end-stage renal and it may not be commissionable. There are certain exceptions to that, so that's something we need to be really well aware of. There is a special needs program for folks who live in an institution like a nursing home. One of the things we see as agents is generally if that's offered by a carrier, they have a captive force that offers it, and generally we're not commissionable on that product. So that's something to be very aware of. And then you have the, the dual special needs program that's available for folks that are beneficiaries of coverage through both Medicare and Medicaid. And boy, that's getting competitive, and boy, that's getting to be a real growth process, and there are some companies that are pretty darn good about how to offer this. And it can be a great benefit for folks that right now, hey, they're not paying anything out of pocket anyway with having just Medicare and Medicaid, but the extra benefits folks have with this can make a big difference to them. So if you're looking at a chronic special needs program, for these folks, as I mentioned, you've got to have A and B, You've got to have the chronic condition named in that type of CSNF and have that condition verified by a physician within a certain time period as well. You've got to reside in that service area and not have end-stage renal disease. There are changes coming for this qualification in the near future on MA programs throughout. But there are also different markets that market a CSNF program specifically for folks with ESRD. And it is commissionable. We have an additional webinar coming up um, that addresses chronic special needs plans. Um, watch for that because this may be a viable marketing uh, choice for you in your market. So keep in mind this special election period is only available once for that particular illness throughout the course of the calendar year. But remember, some of these folks have more than one chronic condition, and depending upon what plans are available, they may be able to utilize a special election period for multiple illnesses. Well, that makes a big difference for us. Um, and the coverage for these programs start the first of the month after an application is submitted and completed. So keep in mind, you've got a time period in there where the verification of that illness has to come into play, or they're going to be put back on the uh, just general Medicare. Here's something where you looking at the National Council on Aging, their healthy aging facts from 2018, 80% of older adults have at least one chronic condition. 77% have at least two. Remember the slide back said three conditions, two thirds of them did, five conditions, almost a quarter of the population. So you have a fairly good chance of running across folks that qualify for these key types of coverage because generally that one condition is fairly common. It's usually cardiovascular diabetes, which ones we run across the most. So you have an opportunity here to help people on an ongoing basis throughout the year. And just because they have a chronic illness doesn't mean it's not under control, diabetics or whatever else. And it gives the skill an opportunity to look at cross-selling with additional coverages as well. So if you look at this commissionable coverage, geez, it's a huge opportunity. So when we talk about lock-in, it's not so tightly locked as we may think. The top 10 chronic conditions based on fee-for-service beneficiaries in the Medicare population, look at those. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, heart disease, heart failure, we get five of them that roll in there that are in a fairly common offering for CSNFs. How do you find them? Well, that's where Medicare.gov comes into play. We'll go into this in greater detail on uh, future webinars. But going in there, you have an opportunity to filter down on offerings for people with special needs as you go through the plan finder and then to give you an opportunity to find carriers in your market that may offer these programs. You can find out the ones that don't, too. When you look at the companies that offer these NIPs as we go into that area, you'll see that the area, this area in the Medicare space, is dominated by a few number of carriers. 
you're seeing a larger number of folks go into this space, and they're generally, a lot of them are main carriers that we think of. United Healthcare has been dominant in the space for a long time. Humana's active in it. Cigna's doing some things with it. WellCare and the Meridian product in, are part of it. So you have all uh, Centene programs as well. And in many markets, Anthem is a great opportunity. So you have a ton of opportunities with carriers you may already be doing business with. And we just need to make certain that you're aware of them and how we properly address this market. These folks also, in certain states, have a demonstration product where the government is working hand-in-hand, -hand, state and federal, to offer a singular program, a Medicare, Medicaid plan, an MMP, that acts much like a DSNP, but the challenge we have as agents in those particular markets is it is administered by the government. It's not a sellable, commissionable plan for us, so we need to be aware of if we work certain counties that have this, because it's not the entire state even, in many circumstances, it can make a huge difference as to whether or not we get paid on business that we're pursuing. So where those are, there you go, different states, and when they came into play and how big of an enrollment, uh, how big a share of our market that affects. If you work with dual special needs programs, or the chronic programs, be prepared to have additional information available. We got to know the plan and the network. So when I have a chronic illness, well, it's like that cardiologist saved my life 30 years ago. A cardiologist might be preparing to retire, and generally, they don't ask you if they can before they do. So knowing not only the network of the doctors and hospitals, we need to be aware of the ancillary providers of sort, the home health care agencies, the durable medical equipment companies that can make a big difference as to whether or not an app sticks. We need to know some of those basics about the assistance programs that come into play. How does the Medicare savings programs and the low income subsidy extra help make a difference? What the heck is Star Plus? Well, that's the MMP program and the Medicare managed care program in the state of Texas. It makes a big difference. That has different names across the country. And then there are certain markets, if you deal with a dual population, well, it can be some fun sometimes, some things that can come into play. If you're marketing this population, it's generally a longer appointment. They have multiple special election periods that can work both ways. Hey, if they can enroll, they can disenroll too. It's important to involve the family and other decision makers as part of this process in that you are well-versed in the plan or plans that you're offering. That means you need to be visible to the carrier that you're working with or carriers that you're working with in a particular market and utilize the resources that are made by those carriers in those markets. The agency managers or whatever a carrier wants to call that role and utilize them their marketing resources, and most importantly, their trainings so you know what you're talking about, and utilize that approved support material. I'm going to touch on a couple of pieces there in a bit with the governmental support because in many circumstances, we're going with a more generic approach on concept and then work into a carrier-based presentation. It really helps not only um, a, an understanding by our prospects and clients, but also helps us get into different uh, centers of influence into the community because we're working for multiple organizations. And that's why you're an independent broker. You're not a captive. You don't have to have just one program, um, but it's not for everybody. As we differentiate between these opportunities, we need to make certain we know what the differences are for these extra benefits. Transportation benefit, number of trips, dental assistance, um, are we looking at some of the social determinant of health type of benefits that come into play? So post-discharge meals, a number of things that can come into play that makes a difference between these programs. And we look at all the providers. As I mentioned before, not just the doctors, primary care specialists. We look at the hospital systems that are involved. We look at the big influencers of uh, home health care 
and durable medical equipment. And we consider the carriers in our particular market. How adept are they giving us the support that we're looking for? The pre-filled marketing material. Do they charge us a certain amount for this or not? Um, what kind of assistance can they help us with with their own marketing, uh, generating different lead programs, and how do we become involved with that? And then, of course, as I mentioned before, the, MM, the MMP program, and we move in many states for a managed care program on Medicaid as well. Knowing that language and how a person in that demographic can be confused by gee, my Medicaid has got a carrier name on it, not just the state. You know, to have your duckies in a row, your apples being differentiated to make certain that we're doing things properly. We come across as an informed source of information, which we better be, and that we're doing things properly. These SNPs, we find out where they are in a particular market the same way with the chronics. So if we go through SNP presentations in the future, we'll walk through those specifically. For those of you going, well, gee, thanks a lot. Go wait for that. Well, we've done it in the past. The, re the uh, recordings are available to you on our website and our YouTube channel as well. You get different pieces of information that you can use for uh, resources to get more information in this space. The government lays out a ton of information on fact sheets, state by state changes. The Plan Finder uh, is a great resource to ship information in a particular marketplace. And then, of course, the handbook for many folks that uh, is a great tool, particularly in the Medicare supplement space, the Medicare and you handbook can make a big difference as to how comfortable we are in our knowledge base and how comfortable we make our prospects and clients. So some of the additional things that you can come into play, this is the piece that I was referring to you where you can actually go into a website made by the government, laid out by the government that's not directly attached on the CMS website that gives you access to a ton of different material at no cost. Now, quantities are limited in many circumstances, but it gives us an opportunity to visit with people with different pieces of information, dramatically demonstrating that that's a live link, hot diggity. That's what it is. Go in and you log in for that. It doesn't allow us to order Medicare and you booklets in great quantity. Oh, you're a broker. We ain't what you're saying, except ourselves, you know, or whatever. But there's some really neat pieces in there, like calendars and some other things that are available to us without cost. They ship to us without cost. That makes it available for us to use different pieces that we can reference in our. Um, grassroots marketing and other pieces that come into play. And of course, it's awfully important to be made aware of the rules that we do in marketing with this space. Hey, I'm going in with just a generic approach. Well, you still have to make certain that you got your duckies in a row, what you're reporting, what you're not, and why you are and why you're not. Um, these guidelines can be made available to you. And we've seen this kind of become more lax than it has in the future where you don't have to report some of the events that we were accustomed to doing in the past. This is another category that we need to address, even though they don't necessarily have to abide by many of the enrollment periods that we have for people in the Medicare space. Just keep in mind, remember that slide if someone turned 65, on half of them that are making a choice are going into med subs. Well, this gives us the information then on when's the best time to buy a Medicare policy. And you will see that if someone can afford that policy because they have a standardized premium each and every month, and that might do it and does not over time, but it gives them then a chance to get as complete a coverage as possible. Medicare Advantage programs are great with having the maximum out of pocket in play, which original Medicare doesn't have, the Medicare supplements, depending upon the choice, can really help limit that cost even further and help us budget for it as recipients because of how those coverages lay out by Medigap policy type. This gives us then an opportunity to market appropriately in certain states too, because some states, well, there are three of them that 
don't abide by the standardized uh, detail for the rest of the states. You know, some states that have a birthday month guarantee issue period, majority don't. Um, it affects to the carriers that can be made available to us as well. So we have to be prepared for the. Gee, can I get a meds up? No. Yeah, you probably can, but you may have to qualify for it medically, and we need to go through and see how we can bring about the proper information to you on Medigat choices that you have. There's nothing more frustrating for a beneficiary to be shown a really cheap med sub, and because of certain health conditions, it's like showing a kid a piece of candy. Here's a fudge bar, but you can't have it. So it gives you then uh, different ideas as to why someone would want to switch med Medigat policies. This is preaching to the choir in many circumstances, I, uh, I'm aware, but there are some folks with differing uh, experience in the Medicare space. Yeah, you have different reasons, obviously. You know, paying for benefits you don't need, that's some of probably the least uh, referenced reason to change. Um, sometimes you need more benefits. Um, you want to change the insurance company because you've had difficulty with service or another reason, or you want a policy that costs less. So there are different play things that can come into play. It's really important that folks realize that most of the time, these are guaranteed renewable policies. So as long as they pay the premium, you can't kick them out unless they pull out of the state altogether. And that makes a difference for us when we go about recommending policies. And we'll address that in just a moment. So the standardized policies, I remember back in a uh, time period in my distant past of visiting with my grandmother um, as a preteen and a teenager, and she had a number of Medicare supplement policies on her kitchen table trying to figure out what I'm doing here. She had multiple set policies. And that came about before the standardization of some of these benefits and the changes that had come about by the legislation that we see to protect the population. But in certain states, Massachusetts, Minnesota, and Wisconsin, the standardization of the Medigap policies aren't the same as they are in the other states, obviously. So you have different things that can come into play, and we also have different regulations that come into play as well. This piece right here applies only to certain individuals because that's now affected by ACRA. We referenced this a little earlier with how this legislation affected some of the SNP plans. It affects the offerings to the newly eligible um, on Medicare and the plan choices that they have. This is language from Aetna in this circumstance and some of the tools that they make available to answer questions about the changes in the Medicare supplement um, availability. Some of this information is coming to you in the follow-up for reference as well, uh, but it's important to note for those folks that have been on Medicare before the first of the year, it didn't change what they have available to them. It may change pricing on certain policies moving forward. Um, some companies have different ideas as to how this is going to be affected uh, as opposed to some others, but they have choices. And this gives us the idea laid out on the slide where, boy, if they're eligible before 2020, the difference that it has versus those that have come eligible in January moving forward. Utilizing the quote engine that we make available to our contracted agents without cost can make a huge difference for you when it comes into play on what plans we make available here. This is a great piece that demonstrates the close relationship between the choices that a Medicare beneficiary has because this gives us an opportunity to run a quote for the Medicare supplements that are available through our organization in a particular market which gives us the opportunity to look at, gee, I need to be contracted with these guys, or, wow, I can use this as a tool with the buying public to give them an idea of the choices they have through a Medicare supplement review, a coverage review. It also gives us an opportunity to look at some of the differences in the Medicare Advantage programs um, and gives us an idea then of selecting one of those to pull in some additional coverages that are made available through the tool as well. 
with Medicare Advantage programs, one of the holes in the coverage that you see quite frequently is that uh, maximum out-of-pocket limit that's influenced by what are the big holes? Well, the daily co-payments when you're in the hospital. So how do you address that with a, a hospital indemnity program? And then, of course, uh, the other 20% that they may have, that's a common hole based on uh, therapeutic radiology. So it gives us an opportunity to discuss our heart attack, stroke, and cancer programs as well. And even if a person makes a choice of one or the other, in most circumstances, a dental uh, program is a big help to them, helps us also with taking advantage of the need for that service to further cement our relationship. And we can also use this tool to procure and store a scope of appointment. If you're offering a med sup, why would you want to do a scope? Well, you don't have to. But one of the things that a conversation about a Medicare supplement commonly leads into are PTP programs. You want to cover yourself. And this is also a way to make certain that you can store these properly. If you sell them or not, it's 10 years. It predicates an additional uh, conversation because that scope can include these other ancillary health programs that you can sell on that same uh, appointment. It's a great way to help you get your duckies in a row and store them um, properly. The AD applications, this is a subset function of this tool that allows you to use an e-app on med subs in many circumstances. Thanks a lot, John, you're teasing us. That's a whole another presentation. This is a way of demonstrating that. We've got the uh, um, link to the recording of that for the e-apps and how to use that tool available to you. Because remember, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Not one program fits everybody. And the government's trying to help us with the Medicare plan finder of making this easier and more accurate uh, for folks to help determine the different choices. It makes it harder on us because they've got to register in the car. We've got to do some things in order to help them because many people, you know, they don't have a computer or they're not technically proficient if they're in this demographic. But it's also an opportunity for us to use a tool like Medicare Center where the big players are in play, the contracts are in place for you, and you can use this also as a CRM and a collection and storage device for that scope of appointment as well. Why do you want to do all this? Gee, John, are you ever going to shut up and just finish up? Well, keep in mind, the more products you have in play in the house, the higher your retention across the board. And what's interesting is they don't all have to be one carrier either. So you might have a base coverage of a Medicare Advantage program with United Healthcare. You may have a SureBridge dental vision and hearing benefit. If you've got multiple policies in that household, you're further protecting your prospecting client. You're also driving up the persistency across the board while creating an additional stream of revenue. Some of the things you get by doing all this with us, well, if you're looking at multiple carriers, this is a great way to contract with them without contracting carpal tunnel. You can create an agent profile and assurance based software and contract with multiple organizations electronically. Lay out all the details that are part of that, create that repository of information, and select a carrier and let it auto flow for you. You don't miss, oh, I was supposed to initial here, or whatever else comes into play with it, because it's there for you to do some things very easily. There may be electronic systems for a particular carrier or two that's not available in the system. There might be circumstances where, hey, I'm not going to do that much. I want to make certain that I can do things as quickly as possible and use the electronic contracting elsewhere. But as an independent agent, you need to cover your tuchus. So we offer discounted errors and omissions coverage that give you the opportunity to have, in many cases, a dictated coverage by the different carriers that you're offering. This covers you regardless of who you're offering that program through. We recognize that there's a number of organizations like ours. You may not be putting all your eggs in one basket when it comes to contracting relationship as well, this is a great way for you to make certain you're covered no matter who you're contracting through. There are organizations out there that may add you to your blanket, you know, in certain circumstances. Generally, it only covers you for the contracts you have through them. And that isn't always 
to your best interest. We also have programs made available that help you keep your license in place through uh, multi-course online insurance continuing, continuing education bundles through our relationship with WebCE. As an independent agent, you also maintain and create your own benefit package. This is a program that comes into play for folks that are looking for uh, disability income for themselves. It's available on a modified guarantee issue basis at discounted rates. You share in the commission. That's a great way to protect your money machine as well. And while we do a ton of webinars across the board with different carriers, we also do them on different marketing concepts. They're all available for you 24-7 on our website and on our YouTube channel. So it's a great way for you to go back through and look at different ways of marketing yourself in a community, making you the subject matter expert by layering on different marketing techniques as well. Remember, you have those access to the online enrollment programs through both the CSG actuarial tool and the EAPs that come with that, the quote engine, and that same type of system for Medicare Advantage and PDP programs, all available without cost to our contracted agents. We also have a program that can put your social media marketing on autopilot as well through a coverage made easy program and a way for you to access all of the information about the uh, compensation you have for production with different carriers and the trips and incentives you may have within the Medicare uh, supplement stage. You see a ton of those marketing allowances, bonuses for production. Keep in mind that most of those incentives also help you qualify for Premier's producer convention, which this year is a cruise from Miami to the Bahamas. We're about to announce the program for the uh, year following, so watch for that detail. But, gee, this is a trip for the sun worshippers most certainly. We also make certain that you have different ways of getting in front of the people that you need to have access to in order to sell something. If you are one of the friends of Ma Bell and your cold calling efforts are still part of your marketing program, it's not bad. It's a great way for you to still market certain programs that allow that. We have a availability of custom list ordered specifically for you that are available at a low cost or no cost, depending upon your contracting circumstances. And we help you market through community-based programs, such as the retail programs, Walmart. Walmart's actually continuing in many markets throughout the year now. There are also different retail programs through different carriers that have that same circumstance. Watch for some interesting things that are coming about with the new Aetna CVS relationship. So you've got some different things that can come into play where you can actually create your own retail marketing program as well, and we can help you uh, understand on how best to do that. We also have programs that help you with centers of influence in the community. This one specifically addresses working with faith-based organizations. We have a program that's designed to help you get into those different facilities. What do you we all have insurance agents? Yeah, are they asking? And how you can maximize that opportunity. Many folks are really good at seminar selling, some not so much. Well, you can still work with one of these centers of influence without having to give a presentation in front of a bunch of people if you don't want to. If you do, hey, we've got presentations you can use. We've also got programs that can help you work with the providers in the community. A great influencer in plan choices, not only doctors and hospitals, but also those providers of other products that we offer. Yes, that comes to mind right away. Some cool things that can be done there, and many of the MA plans have you know, a dental benefit. They work that angle as well. Certain carriers do generate prospects for us as agents. It's important to note, you walk into a situation with a newly contracted carrier with your handout, well, sometimes you'll get something. Most of the time they're going, what are you bringing me, baby? So having that relationship and working that relationship can be important. And we do have internet lead programs that we're working on well now as well. Uh, the Facebook program is a, a well-practice program now with the final expense division of our company. If you don't work final expense, we've got some great people that help you with that. We're bringing that into the Medicare space as well. 
can we still offer direct mail support based on production that can deeply discount the cost of that program and allow you to work with our preferred lead members? We have five of them. We do that to make certain the letters are compliant and we protect you. It's a great way for you to have a partner in sharing that expense. All that said and done, John talking well caffeinated from the, the coffee this morning. We want an opportunity to work with you. We want your business. The challenge that many people have in becoming involved is sometimes they see, here's the carrot. They don't always see the stick, the different things that you need to do in order to be successful in this business. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. We'd all be making a ton of money. Well, let's go through and make certain that we address some of the factors that can limit our success and the things we need to be need to be to be ultra successful. First thing, let's make a decision. So some of the things that you've seen here with techniques on working through election programs and the different carriers and other products that can be a, a key portion of your success in this area. Well, you gonna do it? Let's do it. As John Wayne said in the Cowboys, hey we're burning daylight. Let's get her going, let's get contracted. Let's figure out how we put together that marketing program and follow through with it. You can reach any of us here at Premier Marketing through our toll-free number at 1-800-365-8208 or through our website at premiersmi.com. Discussing the possibilities, working up a plan of attack. If you're one of our current agents, with one program or another, you want to add additional, or hey, tell me more about you guys. Well, you can find out about it. We'll work on a conversation. We'll make certain that you have the carrier and contracting information you need to make that decision and make it with us. We look forward to that conversation. Watch for the follow-up that we'll send uh, about today's presentation with a whole bunch of that material that I've referenced so you have it and you know what you can and can't do. You have questions on it? We're here. one 800 365-8208. Look forward to that conversation. And in the meantime, until that happens, we wish you a good selling. Thanks so very much, and we'll talk to you soon.